Hey everybody, I have to say thank you so much, Sharon, for donating for August. I have not even been on here enough to give you the props you deserve. So thank you very much. Love you. Hey y'all. So I am Candy. You should know that by now. Welcome to my channel. This is the last Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever update I will do. And I say that because it's a good thing. Uh, I um, I have to say that I feel really good. My energy level is up. I am not um, crashing nearly as hard. Um, I still have problems falling asleep and getting super tired um, with if I have like a bunch of people around me, it's almost like over sensory. Um, I don't know how to say that, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, and I really think that that is more from tinnitus and just the fact that I haven't, I haven't been around a bunch of people. I have kept really kind of close to home and to myself. Um, so I'm going to have to like kind of reacclimate myself to that and it will come. I have no, no doubt that it will come. Um, the fatigue, the doctor says is chronic, it's chronic fatigue now. Um, and that I'm assuming that's going to get better. Um, I should have asked her cause I was just there the other day. Um, but I go to church and go to lunch and I'm around all my friends and I'm around everybody at church and I get super tired. I come home and take a nap, try to go back Sunday night and I don't wake up until seven or eight o'clock at night, which is stupid. And so if I could stay awake, then I could probably go back. But then there's those days when I stay awake as long as possible. And that's usually when I end up sleeping later in the evening because I've tried to stay up and then I can't fight it anymore and I crash and go to sleep. So that really is the only thing other than the tinnitus and the, you know, the, the noise of people that still bother me. Um, I, well, and I can't even say that's the only thing because I have a sensitivity to meat and dairy products that I did not have before. Um, and with the second deal of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, that made that worse. So I'm still having to kind of be careful with meat and dairy products because, um, and the, the feeling that I get when I eat um, like a bowl of cereal or some ice cream uh, or some steak is my insides feel like they're going to jump out. It's I just your whole, it's just shaking inside. And that just me doing this is just kind of like an example of what it feels like. Um, it drives me crazy and it's just... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What? You know, and you just, you can't focus because it's so bad. And so I have to be very, very careful with me eating meat, um, red meat and dairy products. Um, I have figured out that if I eat a little bit, I'm okay. So, you know, that should like slowly start going back because I had gotten to where I was okay and it wasn't bothering me and then I got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever again and it came back with a vengeance. So, um, I just have to be careful with that. Um, I have kind of figured out that most of my energy level problems, um, and my, um, the struggle to do things is more related to knee issues because as many of you know I had my left knee done and I was in the process of physical therapy when I got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever when I was diagnosed anyway um, and so 
now my right knee, left knee got done, right knee now is bothering me so bad. The pain is extreme. Um, I, if you've had to have a knee replacement, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have um, no meniscus cartilage left in my in my right knee, and I've ground my bone. Actually, I have a divot out of my out of my um, the shin bone, whatever the bone that's called. My brother could tell me, but anyway, um, I've actually got a divot grinded down in that bone because I've been grinding for so long. So I'm bone on bone on the inside of my knee and the pain is insane. And so we are going to do that knee next and I am waiting for a phone call as we speak so that I can get a surgery date. Um, with that, my thought on everything is that I have probably done um, the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever has probably not been a, as big of an issue for a while but because my knee hurts so bad it's made me feel like that was all tied together um, and I don't know I'm that's not that's not entirely the way that I could <laughs> It's hard to I can't, it's hard to get out what I want to say. It's not that it's tied together because I knew my knee was bad, but the fatigue and um, my pain tolerance has gone way down. Anytime I hurt myself or anything that hurts, it hurts way bad, and I've got a really high pain tolerance, so. Um, my pain tolerance is way down and, um, that is, I know that is from my knee because it hurts so bad. And after you hurt for such a long period of time, your body just can't take anymore. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And, um, I have, I have been able to keep doing like the tumblers, painting in this sense. Um, I've done a little bit of painting, um, like you see behind me, if you can, I can't remember if I set that so you could see those or not, but, um, I haven't really been able to do a lot of the painting on this channel like I would like, and I haven't really been on this channel much, but I just want you to know with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Okay, I got diagnosed no early November of 2017. Um, July, I went and bought a small pool. It's a 10 foot by 30 inch pool. Um, and I feel like that is big enough, just big enough that I can get in and relax, but I can maintain it, right? Um, <clears throat> and so I have actually been out in the pool enjoying my time outside and I've been mowing the lawn since my husband is gone and, um, I actually, for the first time in my very, in my, in my, in my life, I have, um, tan lines from flip flops. I've never had that before. Cause this tells you how much I've been outside, right? Um, anyway, I have had my great nieces over. They've spent the night and we have had a blast. We have played in the pool. We have played outside. Um, and when I say play, I say me watch and they play um, because I can't get around like that. But they are fantastic in helping me out and doing what I need to do. Um, so what is crazy is that through this and my husband being gone, we've lived in this house for almost 20 years and I have had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever twice. 
and I have spent more time outside this summer than I have ever spent outside in this house. And I will tell you that I love my yard. I love the area that I'm in. It is so peaceful, except for the fact that they're putting a turnpike in and I can hear those stupid trucks all day, which really infuriates me. And, um, but my yard and my area is so pretty and I can sit in my little pool and float around in my little pool and enjoy my scenery. And it's really nice when you can be out there like about seven and you can't hear the trucks anymore. But then the mosquitoes get stupid, so it's time to come in. But um, I have gotten sun galore. I got sunburned the other day. I have tan lines on my feet. And I am happy with the world. Um, I wish that my knee were better. And it's going to be as soon as we get it taken care of. And I think that um, as soon as I get that done, things are going to change. I think that that is going to be my turning point in being able to get back to where I was before. And um, the fatigue, I'm not sure if that's going to stick around or not. Um, that really, I don't like that, okay? Because if I'm, this is, if I go to church Sunday morning and go to lunch, I come home and I try to either take a nap or go to sleep or take a nap or stay awake. If I go to, if I end up falling asleep, which generally I do and I can't, I can't fight it. And usually what happens is I try to stay awake and then I end up going to sleep and then I sleep through church on Sunday night. And so I haven't been to church on Sunday night. Um, Wednesday nights, I usually don't feel like getting up and going because I have to drive all the way into town and I'm tired because I've been busy all day and so Wednesday is hard to get back, but I need to get myself back in the swing of doing what I need to do and um, I don't know that that will entail me going back to work. Um... I am not doing hair and staying off for a year. It doesn't mean um, it's not good good for your clientele to come back, if you know what I mean. So, um, you know, who knows? I have no clue what the, what the future holds. I have my license. Um, I still have my license, so I'm still able to go back if I want to. Um, if my body will allow it, we'll see. Um, I um, my I probably I probably if anything else, if I go were to go back to work in any shape, form, or fashion, it will probably be probably probably May, I think May or June of next year if I, if I decide to do anything. Um, and that's because, um, I'll have my knee done and I'll need six months to get over that, um, to get my strength and the pain, you know, down to where I need, where I need it to be. And then, um, to, you know, work on getting everything, getting my health back where I need it to be after having that surgery. So, we will see. But, um, I had to come on one more time and let you know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You just may not have come around the curve yet. So, um, if you're struggling with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, just know that there is an end of the tunnel, okay? Um, the light will shine soon, I promise. Um... They say probably 12 to 24 months is what you have to look forward to um, if you had it. And what I'm going to say, 
I'm going to say I probably had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever for four months before we caught it. And that was, the symptoms didn't show up until then. And the only reason I say that is because that was the last time I was bit by a tick that I found. You don't have to find the tick. You, you could be, the tick could bite you and be gone because they are so small. And then some of them are even smaller than the ones that you know are there. Um, and the second one that I got, the second round I got, I probably, I'm going to say it's probably because I found this minuscule little tick on my belly. And chances are it had been there for a little bit. And so, um, that's, I don't know for sure, but that's what I'm going to say. And at that time I had like, I think six or seven ticks that I had found that were, that were bit, you know, that, that were in my skin. Um, so just know you're not, you may not have your, your symptoms may not show up all the way. They may not, you, I didn't have a rash, never had a rash. I am, my fever never spiked. The highest my temperature got was like 102, maybe. Um, the main thing that I had was a severe headache, a stiff neck, sore shoulders. I felt like I had the flu, but not, I almost thought it was meningitis. And, um, so that was my, my symptoms. And the second time was the same. They just weren't as bad. So just know that you're not, you may not have the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever highlighted um, symptoms because not everybody has the same symptoms and you may not have any of them. Just know that if you find a tick and you and then you get to feeling bad tell the doctor that you need a rocky mountain spotted fever test and you have to you're going to have to speak up for yourself in a lot of places because from what i've have found through social media and the people that i have got been in contact with that have rocky mountain spotted fever that live in other states um, the doctors generally won't test you because you don't have a rash or you don't have this symptom or you don't have that symptom. And I didn't have those symptoms. So I'm just saying, be your own advocate, take care of yourself and make sure that you have your yard treated and your animals treated and that you have bug spray to put on yourself when you're outside. Um, but then also know that outside is not your enemy because like I said, I've spent more time outside since July and um, this last two full months, I have spent more time outside in at my home than I've spent ever out there. And I really like my yard and I did not know that till now. And I'm really happy where I'm at. So anyways, that's it for me. That's it for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. If I find a need to come back on, I will. But I think that I have this has run its course. I think that um, I am doing well. And the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is pretty much behind me. Um, you know, fatigue, I can handle. I, I, I can deal with that. Um, learning to acclimate myself to groups of people and work on that. I can do that too. So just know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to ask. All of my social media is on the back of the video. Um, if you want, send me an email. Hook, look me up on Facebook. We can talk on Facebook if you want. Um, shoot you can find me you can find me on instagram just hunt me up and if you have any questions holler and i will do the best i can to help you um i can get you 
um, on the Facebook page that I'm on. Um, and it is science-based. So you get a lot of facts and not a bunch of mumbo jumbo sometimes that some places like to dish. But anyways, I'm not gonna go any further. So I love you guys so much. I hope that if you have come across this video that um, any of my Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever videos, I hope that I have helped you in some way because that's what I intended to do because I could not find anything on my own for Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and I needed, I really felt like I needed to get this out and share with you so that it may help. So I hope that I've at least helped some people um, and that's all I got. So we're going to wrap this up. I love you so much. Thank you so much for your prayers, your positive feedback, um, your support through all of it. Um, I'm flabbergasted at the amount of support that I've had through my YouTube family. Um, you guys are fantastic and I love you so much. I'll yak at you later. Bye.